Daredevil Stunts and Barnstorming was losing its luster by 1929. Setting records was now king. The women pilots set new endurance, altitude, speed, and distance records. They carried passengers. And they gave flying lessons. On August 19th and 29, it was a hot overcast day in Santa Monica, overflowing with spectators, for the start of the first Intercontinental Women's Air Derby. 20 female aviators signed up to participate in this over 2,700 mile course to the finish line in Cleveland, Ohio. With 25,000 bucks on the line, the aviators took off on a grueling eight day journey. Back then they had no iPhone for navigation. The racers relied on dead reckoning and road maps. Only 14 of the 20 arrived at that finish line. In the heavy class, Louise Thaden came in first place and Phoebe Omley led the lightweights. After arriving in Cleveland, several of the pilots gathered under the grandstand and pondered the possibility of an organization for female pilots. They decided to send a letter to all 117 licensed female pilots across the country inviting them to a meeting with the goal of establishing a female pilot's organization. Within the letter it stated, it need not be a tremendously official sort of an organization, just a way to get acquainted, to discuss the prospect for women pilots from both a sports and breadwinning point of view and to tip each other off on what's going on in the industry. Could you attend an organizational meeting on November 2nd around 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Curtis Field, Valley Stream, Long Island? Now they've decided to organize, what are they going to call themselves? Almost every imaginable name was proposed and then rejected. Amelia Earhart finally suggested the name be taken from the total number of charter members. When that final tally was made a few months later, they had their name the 99s. When the new organization of the 99s held their first election in 31, Amelia Earhart was elected president. By 1935, there were 700 licensed women pilots in the United States. The 30s and 40s are busy times for the 99s. Louise Thaden and Blanche Noyes win the Bendex Trophy, competing for the first time against male pilots. There was Lowe's when in July of 1937, Earhart was reported missing while attempting a flight around the world. In 1941, the 99s established a flying scholarship in Earhart's name to support an inspiring female pilot's advanced flight training. It was July of 1941, almost two years into the war, and England was desperately short of pilots. Flight schools couldn't keep up with the demand. Their solution was to use female aviators to ferry planes around the British Isles. Ninety-nine member Jackie Cochran went over to Britain and took 25 hand-picked American women recruits to help ferry planes for the ATA. As the U.S. entered World War II, the military needed more pilots for domestic duties, such as flight testing and ferrying aircraft, so that they could send the male combat pilots overseas to fight in Europe and the Pacific theaters. They created the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, better known as the WASPs. In October of 1950, a new page was turned for the 99s when for the first time they expanded outside of the U.S., opening up their first international section in Ottawa, Canada. And they were still air racing. 
They were opening new chapters across the United States and now Canada. They were breaking records. Jackie Cochran broke the sound barrier. Jerry Mock was the first female pilot to fly around the world. They were painting compass roses and air marking, and some of the members wanted to go to space. In the 1970s, the airline started hiring female pilots. Sally Ride was the first American woman in space in 83, and Eileen Collins was NASA's first female shuttle commander in 99.